right I'm gonna turn this camera on so you can see never take a lowered car into a construction site not as low as I'm sitting on coilovers right now pretty slammed to the ground my badge hanging here but uh trying to get through this uh, rockiness and these uh, grates that are set here to knock the gravel off anybody traveling down this road mainly bobcats and that kind of stuff oh uh, uh, oof man hate taking my lowered cars into places like that the things I go to just to run RC all right welcome back so today we are all finished up went ahead and changed out the hardware I'm going to show some behind the heat scenes clips of uh of what I did I'm just gonna install this zip tie again to hold these wires down I just put it through the fan blade and no it's not close enough to hit the fan blade just to hold it down and it really doesn't even need to be held down to me it just looks cleaner but I'm charging up some batteries right now Take it out, go rip it, and uh, so I worked pretty long and hard on this thing. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring you guys in and talk about why I never use this uh, this mount on the X Max and. Even though I've installed it into this car, um, why I believe that this is not good for bashing, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so as you see, I locked tight at the gears on last night, I got the mesh set. little tighter than I had it before this cover no longer fits on and when it comes to bashing all the dirt and the debris is now gonna end up down in this galley down to where the center diff is and your rear diff is and the only thing stopping the dirt from getting to the center diff gears and the cush drive gear over here is a bearing. And same thing when it comes to the drive shaft area. So this is going to allow a lot of dirt and debris to now go in, in there. So because it's a basher, we're going to be in dirt, rocks, all kinds of other stuff like that. Now, Vitavon, this mount that, that I purchased off eBay, I got the idea from the True Boys channel. He was building an X-Max, and he put a big block in it. And I was like, oh, man, I want to do that too. So bought the same mount. He ended up doing a belt drive system. And I was watching all his videos as he was doing, doing it, talking to him. And the videos looked pretty decent. It looked like the thing had tons of power. He was running in front of his house on road, back and forth, doing some bashing just in the street. And then he ended up selling it. And when I talked to him, I said, hey, I got my mount. I'm getting ready to put a you know 800 KV in one of these with a Max 5. I'm going to go full big block on my X Max. He's like, man, I just wouldn't do it. I was like, what do you think about that belt drive system? He's like, man, it, it, it was a mess. Uh, he didn't like it. And uh, he brought up some good points, and I started thinking about it. 
It's like if I were going after a speed build, throw on some foam tires onto an X Max, do a big block setup in it with a Max 5, just to get some maximum speeds or even running across like a park, you know, the park grass, that kind of stuff, flat surfaces, you know, um, I, I think this would be fine just racing around with a bunch of speed. But that's not why I have an X Max. And that's not why I bought the XRT. I want to jump this thing. I want to backflip it. I, you know, I want to beat up on it. I'm going to crash. I don't land right. Um, I want to throw paddle tires on it. I want to go rip it in sand. Um, I want to take it off road. These are my beater RCs. And that's why I like this size RC. And this is why I like plastic RCs. My metal chassis ones, I was bending chassis, then I bought NPC chassis, and I ended up spending a lot of money, and uh, I, I, I literally made them so strong that they were tanks, and I couldn't keep control arms on them, because there's no plastic control arm out there that's going to support all this aluminum down the center on a bad crash without breaking something, and yes, you can put metal arms and then metal diffs and then have a full metal RC but then you're just going to start bending stuff so I just didn't want to get into that I looked into the dollar factor what it cost me to do all these upgrades and run it like I run my RCs I run them I beat on them I'm you know I jump them I take them to Big Bertha you know that kind of stuff when you're doing that it's way cheaper, and that's what I liked about Ar um, not Arma. Traxxas, that's something I liked about Traxxas, is that all these replacement parts, it's $5 here, $10 there, $20 for a chassis. And when it came to the Arma, I was like, well, you know, $100 chassis, you know, every time I would bend one. Or, you know, I, I need a control arm. I can't just buy one control arm. I got to buy you know, the right sides or the left sides, or it comes with front, right and left, and rear, right and left. So they were $50 for a set of control arms where Traxxas was, you know, 8 to $10. And you can buy the control arm that you need that you broke. So when it came to bashing, the X-Max was always a cheap solution because if I broke it, it was $10, $15 for the day. No big deal. A lot of fun for the weekend. When I started breaking my armas, it was $100 for the weekend to get them put back together. And then I ended up with a bunch of leftover parts. Parts sometimes I can use. Most of the time I can't. I have, like I was talking to RC Guy Garage the other day. On my, on my Outcast 8S... I kept breaking the first set of arms on the uh, ready-to-runs. Then I noticed they came out with a revision arm. Um, same thing with the Creighton 8S. The original arm that was on that, it got revised. And I believe now they're just selling the EXB arms for that. But there, it went through two revisions on those arms. Well, I ended up replacing a bunch of right side arms. And I have a pile of left side arms. And it seems like every time I would crash... The weight of the RC would land off big jumps the same direction and break the same arm. So I would always have to go buy another pair. And I ended up with a bunch of arms for the other side of the RC that I couldn't use on what I broke. So bins and bins full of parts that I just can't use. Back to this uh, motor mount setup. So I had purchased this. I, I even had purchased the 800 KV, the Max 5. I had purchased everything. Um, all the stuff I ordered for the electronics, I ordered from a company that ended up closing. And they're reopened now. And people all the time are like, Earl, you should buy from blah, blah, blah company. I don't want to put them on blast, but you should buy from them. And uh, I was like, look, no, I ordered some stuff. It was told it was on the way. It never got shipped to me. Eventually, it ended up closing. It ended up relocating and reopening again. Um, and, you know, sent the guy several messages. And he kept saying, yeah, it's on the way. It's 
coming to you, don't worry. First it was they were in stock. Then it was he didn't have them. He had one of them. He had to order the other one. I'm like, well, whatever you have, just send me. I'll pay for that. And I don't want to order anything. I can just, you know, I can order this stuff off eBay or call the manufacturer. I'll find somebody that has it. You said you had them. And now all of a sudden you don't have them. And now I'm two months into it. Can't get videos done. Can't get this thing installed. And, you know, long story short, it's why I never installed this mount. Then I was looking at this mount. When you start adding all this metal here, like the Vitavon. Vitavon, you know, I like their mount. I think it's pretty cool. I like their cush drive support that they're doing on it. And I like the cover that they built for their setup so that you can cover these gears. Put the cover covering these gears, and I've talked about this before. That was something I struggled with Arma because rocks and stuff would end up in their gears and it would chew up your gears and then it was a very noisy RC. And then over time, you'd end up having to buy, you know, $100 worth of uh, gears just to replace the stuff. So that's got me a little concerned, but I'm gonna get this thing out today. I'm gonna do some speed rips. But that's why I never installed this. I have it in this XDR. And in my opinion, I believe this stuff's going to come back out. Um, honestly, I, it has tons of power. If I was just doing speed rips, this is the setup that we're, that I would use. Gears open, it's no big deal. You're just doing a speed rip. Whether it's on road or on grass or, you know, even down a dirt road, it's not so bad. But bashing... When you're kicking up all those rocks and all that stuff in here, it's just, it's going to take its toll. And then when crashing, you have all this metal here. And the chassis is trying to flex, and yet you got a metal plate. And even though you see all this, and I even saw M2C's bracing that they're doing, you still only have the four bolts that are holding this with the washers or whatever you put in there. Because those screws do pull through. And the chassis still needs to flex there a little bit. So we're taking this whole section and we're making it not flexible. Because we've added a bunch of aluminum here. So it's just things that I see. Whether it's the case or not. And people do bash them. Um, they put this these big motors in here. A lot of weight. That kind of stuff. But honestly with a motor of this size. And the proper gearing. And the way Trax has designed this mount, you know, it, it, it does really well, you know. Um, and if you break it, it's cheap to fix. This stuff is not cheap to fix. So, and I always look at cost. Because I own, you know, over 100 RC cars. The money has to be spread between all these cars. So, you, you can't. You can't just keep breaking it, grab another one off the shelf, break that one, grab another one. Before you know it, your whole fleet is going to be broken and you're going to have thousands of dollars sitting here that you can't even enjoy. You're going to be wrenching on it just constantly. But I do know of uh, people that, uh, that build their RCs and don't really bash them like I do. And that's fine. This setup is good for those kind of people. It's... I mean, the wow factor of looking at this is incredible. Me, I like to use my stuff and I like to beat on it. So, and I look at what it's going to cost me to fix it. This is definitely, I think, going to be a cool setup. I do like putting the fans on the side. I'm using the factory heat sink. More factory stuff I can use, the better. So, it definitely needed the Max 6. Um, even with the stock motor, I still believe the stock motor and the Max 6 is the way to go. If you're just going to bash on this thing and jump it and flip it and crash it and that kind of stuff. Even at a skate park. Doing this at a skate park? I don't know. I just don't see all this money sitting here to destroy it. But that's just me. But we got oversized gearing. And you got to remember, this setup is limited to the gearing that you can run. That was another thing, you know, this whole setup, you can do some pretty tall gearing and get some ridiculous speeds out of this thing. I'm going to show the behind the scenes footage real quick. So watch some of the behind the scenes stuff, and then we're going to go rip this thing. 
All right, just a little behind the scenes of me changing out these uh, motor screws. Not only changing them out, but uh, using, this is the motor that comes with this foam. I actually cut the foam out and I'm making bump stops for the back of the motor so that uh, if it bends or flexes it's not going to uh, it's not going to ruin uh, ruin the mount or the motor they literally supply you the foam when you buy these kits and I tell everybody to save this stuff because you can use the foam for your batteries. And in this case, I'm using it as a bump stop for the back of the motor. Since this mount is an older mount and it doesn't have support got to make your own support I always say be uh be smarter than uh than what you're working on so adding some screws and a little like I said I'm Loctite and everything Use blue Loctite on this stuff because I do want it to come off. Just adding washers to these uh, to these nuts or screws. I'm going to switch up to some red Loctite for the gear. So a seven millimeter. You see me rolling it and checking it. And that's because sometimes these cush drive shafts bend. Let's 
So 75% of that gear is in there. And we're right on top of the padding. So with this motor, you can twist it a little bit. And I've got it twisted down. This side's a little lower than this side. And that gives me firm tension on the back. Just take your time. This isn't a marathon. You got to do things, you know, once or twice or three times. It doesn't matter. As long as it's right. In the end. Yeah, now my motor mount's a lot straighter. It's still a little low on this side and high on this side, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. There we go. Just a little behind the scenes. All right, getting this battery plugged in. Then we're gonna get a GPS on it. It's been raining all day, of course. You can't really win. On the days you wanna run, But I also have my X-Max out here. That's the white X-Max. Um, I changed the upper bulkhead on that too. So I want to give that a rip out here as well. I do have the GPS in this thing. I kind of want to see where the gears are at. So let's see. The GNS. Upgrade, no. Analyzer. This one. Hopefully it'll pick up a uh, GPS signal. It is kind of cloudy out here. But this is the same place I ran the fire team. Some people were saying that I gave the fire team an unfair advantage because I ran it at a construction site like this. But this is where I tend to run these RC cars. Seven satellites, we're gonna hit track, start, 81 percent so i don't know how much speed i'll be able to get out here but we'll get some sort of speed it'll give me some sort of idea batteries are kind of topped off I kind of want to give it a, like a speed rip this is kind of a long stretch down here I don't think I'll be able to open it up but on dirt we'll be able to tell That was about quarter to a half a trigger. Man, there is definitely not enough room to be doing speed rips here. Stop, read, look at that, 47 miles an hour on dirt. Nice and easy. I'm gonna just go ahead and hit track and start. We're just gonna let it run and see what the average is at the end. But like I said, it's been raining all day. The rain has let up a little bit, so it is damp out here, but it's not too bad. Long as there's no mud and no big piles of uh, water, uh, the RC should do okay. And conditions like this are perfect for the X-Max. For a fire team, I just don't think, oh yeah, see? They didn't scoop it smooth. So that jump's no good. Wow. 
want to see how this uh, bulkhead does. That was a big boulder. Oh, it's actually a lot rougher than it was when I was here with the fire team. Because they're literally working this ground right now. This is kind of where the X-Max shines, but it'll roll over a lot with this rough. With this rough ground where this all right into a rock. But like I was saying, this is where the X-Max tends to shine because the high, high center of gravity chassis clears most of these little rocks. See, and this rock wasn't even that big. Look at this rock. This rock caused it to flip over. It's not even that big. Oh, hit another rock. Very rocky. We're in California. Look, a rock just chilling right here. Imagine if I hit this rock and don't see it. If I hit the, look at this glass that's on the ground. Right? I hit stuff like that, you're gonna break something. To me, this is all normal conditions. If it can't handle these rocks. Then it's not an RC for me. Oh, backflip right into a pile of, uh, of plants. Oh, that is deep. Let me uh, throw in some rocks in there because of snakes. See where you're landing. <sighs> Definitely don't want to get bit by snakes. It's cold, so the snakes are probably underground Oh, that tire came undone Yep. Tire came unglued. 100%. So this front tire is unglued all the way around. Only a matter of time with a big block. And if you keep ripping it, you're gonna rip the foam. And that's just the speed, the wheel speed. Let's see what, uh, how fast we got it up to. 
stop, read, only 44 miles an hour. And the tires come undone. Let's turn this off. That's why I bring an X-Max. I really gotta put the uh, same battery connectors in my X-Max so I can run out this pack. I don't have the wrench to swap the X-Max tires over or I would just do that. You can see that one tire just uh, ballooning like crazy. It only came unglued from the outer. Definitely gonna have to tighten up the center diff. And that's why the front tires will blow, uh, blow out like that. Because they're tur turning into pizza cutters. But there we go. That's gonna end this video. This video is getting too long. This is, uh, this is the big block. Let's take a look at this mount. As you see the body, me heating it up. You can see, probably throw a piece of tape or something there just so it doesn't wear through the body. Hasn't worn through yet. The mesh hasn't moved. Fans are all working. Fans are staying on with all those crashes. Let's get the GPS out of here. ESC fans still going. Everything's doing pretty good. I did add, I glued foam to the front parts of the battery because I have my connectors facing this way and on a nose let's take a look at the train there's our metro leak going by but with these nose impacts if you don't have padding in here I glued padding in here same padding that was in the, the motor box I just cut out pieces and put it in the front I'm probably gonna put a little piece in the rear Let's try to get these uh, connectors unplugged. Oh, pulled my ESC out. Nice thing about Velcro. It'll pop off. Also makes it easy to clean. But there we go. Body. And we're good. So I'm gonna rip my X-Max for a little bit uh, just to kill some more packs I have. But there we go, like, comment, subscribe. I gotta get this out on a better day. Give this big block a real test. But so far it's doing pretty good. I feel a basher at 50 miles an hour is perfect because that's basically all the speed you're gonna need in an area like this is about 50 miles an hour but let me know your thoughts like comment subscribe mini big block full big block or stock motor with max six what's your preference thanks for watching catch you on the next video just finished running the xrt and i'm just gonna throw these these packs are in here loose they're too small for this but it's the only ones that i had somewhat of a charge in they're at 80 percent and uh, I want to rip this thing a little bit. See how it does in the same conditions as uh, as the XRT. Hopefully I don't destroy those batteries because they're flopping around in those trays. But it is what it is. Did I tighten these lug nuts down? No. Oh, good thing I didn't rip it. Oh well, we're gonna have to do this another day. I stole these wheel hexes, or these wheel lug nuts, and I didn't tighten them down. And I don't have the wheel wrench on me. Man, that sucks. Live to fight another day, X-Max. Guess we gotta go home. Man, that, that blows. It's what happens when it's raining and you, you know, got a lot of things to do in one day. You don't always catch everything to bring. 
and that's why I don't like swapping parts from one RC to another it's because I forget stuff like that even though I put them on I forgot to tighten them down oh well